I'm going to tell you about radiography. I'm a radiographer, and at the moment, I'm the acting head of department of radiography here at the Investor Pretoria. I'm proud to be associated with the Investor Pretoria, very proud to be part of the School of Healthcare Sciences. We call ourselves the Big Five. <laughs> All right. Radiography. We don't fix radios. <laughs> We use radiation emitting equipment to produce images of internal structures so that we can show if there's some illness, we can show if there is some broken bones so that the other professionals can manage better, which means they cannot manage better without us. <laughs> Radiography at Investor Pretoria. We currently offer a three-year undergraduate diagnostic radiography. We have radiation therapy and nuclear medicine at the honors level. Radiography as a profession in South Africa has got four categories. Diagnostic being the main one. And then we have ultrasound, we have radiation therapy, we have nuclear medicine. Diagnostic radiography and ultrasound, you'll find those services everywhere at every level of healthcare service delivery, from community healthcare centers up to tertiary academic hospitals. From private, public, they are there. Internationally, you'll find them. Radiation therapy and nuclear medicine are highly specialized, so you'll find them at tertiary hospitals like Steve Bigo Academic and other big um, advanced private, uh, private, um, private hospitals. What is a diagnostic radiographer? In diagnostic radiography, we have different kinds of equipment. And for that, we can perform a lot of many, many different kinds of procedures and examinations. Starting from general radiography, when you're thinking of somebody coughing, coughing, always say x-rays, you're going for lung, uh, chest x-ray. Or somebody falling the sports ground and everything, okay, broken bones, radiographers must come and do the x-ray. But we go further than that. With other modalities that we have, like the CT scan, where we can produce images that appear like slices of bread. If you think of the bread, the slices. It's like with a CT, CT machine, we are able to produce images that cut through the body, and you are able to see different layers of your body. So what we are having here, the image in the middle, the circular one, is like cut through the brain. And with a very close to uh, similar equipment, is the MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. Magnetic resonance imaging does not use X-rays, but electromagnetic waves. And with that equipment as well, we can produce um, slices of images, cross-sectional imaging. And the difference between the two is that CT is, mo uh, is well um, suited for demonstrating clinical conditions including bony abnormalities. When it comes to magnetic resonance imaging, it's very good at demonstrating detailed, detailed soft tissues, things like ligaments, muscles, magnetic resonance imaging will show you. And you know why I love radiography? Because nobody can produce this except me. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't stop there with diagnostics. You see that image that is like flickering, flickering, flickering? That shows you the blood. The blood as it's going up, what, uh, pulsating. So the, the cerebral, um, we call it cere cerebral angiography. We can do it in the abdomen, we can do it in the legs. If somebody has been in a major accident and maybe there's a huge fracture and they think the major artery has been torn, we have to see, they have to see before they start fixing the bone that 
the arteries are in place, so we'll do the angiograms. If there's a problem of DVDs and whatever, we'll do the venograms. All the grams, we do them. <laughs> <laughs> and we also don't stop there. We have mammography as well. They're all part of diagnostics. With mammography, breast, we know breast cancer is tormenting. South Africa is one of the highest killers. We have mammography equipment. They, they go to stereotactics. And at the moment, our beautiful hospital here, Steve Biko, they've installed the latest um, technological uh, equipment in mammography. And our students get the opportunity to be trained on that. OK, a little bit about ultrasound. At the moment, we are not offering ultrasound, but we'll be introducing it very soon, also at the postgraduate level. Ultrasound also doesn't use x-rays. So what we teach our students in first year, they must know all these four modalities. Just an overview so that a person can decide when they want to specialize, which way do I want to go. And the person can also be able to advise somebody if a person must go for exams. Some of these um, imaging procedures are very expensive. CT, MRI are very expensive. And CT, we always say, it has got high radiation dose. So our students get to be trained to know that you can advise the patient on other modalities, other procedures that can be performed. They were talking about sports medicine, biokinetics, and whatever. Ultrasonographers do a lot of sports imaging, musculoskeletal imaging. So if a person maybe is referred for MRI, cannot afford MRI, ultrasound does provide, even though it will not be at the same detail, but it does provide soft tissue delineation of those, uh, of those injuries. And ultrasound, famously, that's why we put the patient of, uh, or the image of a fetus there. It's very commonly known for um, pregnancy. It can detect, through ultrasound, one can detect the growth or how the baby is growing and even the abnormalities. Uh, or, or even to tell how many babies are there. And now, advanced technology again. They've got the 4D imaging, where they can play around with that unit and sh show you the face of the child and even tell you if there are gross abnormalities. But the catch is, sometimes you'll find people that are not qualified using the equipment. So that is something that is not right and is correct that for each and every person who needs a service, make sure that you are examined by people who are qualified and registered with the HPCSA. All of us, um, our nursing is, nurse is registered with uh, South African Nursing Council, but most of our professions here were registered with the HPCSA. Okay, a little bit about nuclear medicine. What is nuclear medicine? I like to describe nuclear medicine as sort of like the opposite of diagnostics. With diagnostic, I put the patient on the x-ray table, I've got an x-ray machine, and then I manipulate my x-ray machine, I press the buttons, I open up the cones, and then radiation comes out, goes into the patient, and is received on the cassette or on the film, or what we call now with digital, uh, an image receptor. With nuclear medicine, it's slightly opposite. The patient is injected with a radio pharmaceutical, put on the table, gamma camera, and the radiation is emitted from the patient, taken up in the camera, and the images will show where the problem areas are. It can show various conditions, including advanced cancers and all that. So it's a very good um, profession as well. Demonstrate even where maybe general radiography cannot show you those very tiny fractures. Nuclear medicine will show you. Coming to radiation therapy. Radiation therapy, if you think of people who suffer with cancer, 
We know the story, cancer cannot be healed. But it doesn't mean if you have got cancer, then it's the end of life. So there's treatment through radiation therapy where they use high radiation dose. Diagnostic radiography is radiation, but the one that you get in radiation therapy is mega voltage. But the training there is, a radiation therapist is trained in such a way that they know how to limit that high radiation dose to the problem area and not damage the tissues around it. And through that radiation therapy, or through, during their, uh, their training period, they learn with the use of other modalities that are even used in diagnostic, the CT scan, how to plan for their treatment. So the patients are helped and a person can get a longer life even with that horrible disease, but not necessarily just give up and say there's nothing that can be done. So it is also a very good profession to follow. What is the course all about? It's a full-time course. I'm talking about the diagnostic three-year degree at the moment with a fourth-year compulsory community service. We all do comp uh, what community service. We register with the HPCSA, and the degree involves learning of professional diagnostic radiography knowledge, attitudes, and skills. And the training is undertaken in tertiary hospitals like the Steve Biko. Galafong is also a tertiary now. We, students go there. We have regional hospital, Mamilodi. We have district hospital, uh, Tswane district, the one here. And then we have Pretoria West. And our students also rotate to private. In Louis Pasteur, we have Dr. Mkabele in Duna. Our students do the training there. So what is very nice with radiography that we offer at UP is that our students rotate at all these places. They get exposure. They get experience. It's unlike at some places where a student stays in one practice only. So our students, when they qualify, they are well-rounded to face anything in the world. Selection requirements, I'm not going to talk much about this. They're going to talk about them. What I can say is, where will a radiographer work? I've indicated, find x-ray machines. Now we can find one in a community health care center. X-ray machines in the mines, x-ray machines. Um, oh, there's industrial radiography if you want to venture into that one as well. But um, state hospitals, private hospitals, internationally you can also go. The degrees from University of Pretoria are well sought of. I just get jealous when they go. I always pray that they come back after two years. They go. <laughs> All right. And the other thing is, as a radiographer, you can also open your own private practice. So you are not limited to being employed by somebody. You can open your own private practice, and then you can also hire a radiologist to do the interpretations for you. <laughs> okay. Personal qualities that one must have to come into this profession. Good moral character, good interpersonal skills. I always say, where you see a doctor, you see a nurse, the radiographer will be there. So we're always there. There are very few exams that can be done in the hospital without the services of a radiographer. So your interpersonal skills are important because everybody in the hospital refers patients to you. So you must be able to interact with everyone. You must be able to make quick and responsible decisions. If people come from an accident and everything they say, perform the x-rays, you are not going to think and say, okay, where do I start? Patient is going to die, so quick thinking is what we need. <laughs> you must pay attention to detail. I always say to my students, don't wait for somebody to tell you, repeat this x-ray, is not nice. You look at it, you know this is not a good quality. You must always strive to take the best one. And then demonstrate initiative, work well under stress. I've indicated that and can accept and use constructive criticism. The people that you work with, this other one say, oh, no, no, I didn't want this x-ray. No, you did this other one. I want the other one. Okay, do another one. Okay, just communicate and say, okay, what is it that you want to see? Maybe this is not the correct modality. Maybe if you use this one, it will be better instead of making me do another one and another one. Okay. And I'm looking forward to seeing you join us next year. Come to radiography. Technology is moving very fast, and we are the fastest. 
in radiography. So if you want to enjoy a career in healthcare sciences, radiography is the one. Thank you very much.